Hey there, and welcome back to our channel. So, how many of you work long hours at a desk? And how many of you have any of the following? Neck and shoulder pain, low back pain, wrist pain. I'd love to hear in the comments how many hours you sit at your desk each week on average and how long you've had one or more of these common desk job pains. Today, we're gonna show you our top five desk stretches that you can do without even leaving your chair. These stretches will help you stay limber, reduce tension, and keep these aches and pains at bay. Stick around to the end because we're gonna have a special bonus stretch for you. So, let's dive right in. Our first desk stretch is for the levator scapula muscle and is perfect for releasing tension in your neck, shoulders, from typing all day and using the computer mouse all day. So, how many of you get a persistent pain on the right or left side of your back between the shoulder blade and your spine, kind of right about here for most of you? It's really common. A lot of my clients come in complaining about it. So you're gonna start by sitting up tall. You're gonna grab the bottom of your chair with your right hand. You're gonna turn your head slightly to the left and you're gonna drop your chin gently towards your left shoulder. That's gonna elongate the levator, which attaches to the upper part of your neck and the upper part, inside part of your shoulder blade. And you could just choose to hang out here and give a nice count for 20 to 30 seconds and make it a passive stretch. The other version is to very lightly pulse into the stretch for about one to two seconds each pulse and do a set of 10. This is more of an active style of stretching. Personally for my body, active works better. So I like these for most stretches, but try them both, see what works best. How many of you have had issues with carpal tunnel syndrome, tennis elbow, golfer's elbow, or trigger finger? Regular stretching of your forearms can really help with all of these issues. If you've had them, and want to keep them from coming back in the future, you really should check out these sets of stretches. So we're going to take that levator stretch we just did down the arm and now work on our wrist extensors, which is the top part of the arm, and the flexors, which is the bottom part. So we're going to start with the flexors. So you're going to put your arms palm up, grab the opposite fingers with your hand, and you're going to stretch the wrist backwards. This is, you should feel in the fingers themselves, in the hand, and if you're really open, you should get it all the way down to the elbow. And again, you could choose to just hold this for 10 to 20 seconds and make it a passive stretch, or you can do gentle, repeated pulses for an active style. And then make sure you switch sides. You want to do the left as well. So we can make this a passive stretch or an active one. Basically, we're gonna start with your palms down this time and you're going to use the other hand to pull the wrist back towards you in the other direction. So again, you could choose to just hold this or make it active. So if I just bend my fingers and pull my fingers back like that without as much of a wrist bend, you're going to feel that more on the back of the hand. If I pull more on the wrist but not the fingers, I'm going to feel that more here and hopefully down here. But if I want to get it to go all the way down, I want to think about creating more of a curve with those joints and extending out and almost pulling the wrist and fingers out away from your elbow. And that is gonna get it to come all the way down to the lower attachment on the elbow. So how many of you feel like your posture is being negatively impacted by your desk work? I feel like all of you are raising your hands right now. Definitely like write down in the comments if that's something that you think you're dealing with. We're gonna help your ability to stand tall and stretch your entire back with a seated spinal twist. So first, I'm gonna show it to you this way, but at, at your office, you could just turn in your chair, but you wanna turn so that you're sitting sideways in the chair and that the back is at your side. 
you're going to sit up tall, you're going to use your arms to grab the back of the chair, and you're just going to try to twist, and you can use your arms to help increase the twist. What you don't want to do is crunch into your spine, you want to make sure that you're staying tall, and then Again, you could choose to make this passive by ju just holding it, or you could choose to make this active by stretching and releasing and doing that in a set of 10. I'm going to hold it for a little bit, feels good, and then I'm going to switch. So at your office, you could just roll in your chair, but I wanted to make sure that you can see what I'm doing. So again, I'm going to grab the back of the chair, sit up tall, and switch. And I'm going to twist. I don't know if you heard that, probably not, but I had a little tiny chiropractic pop there, which was very nice. And you may find that you get those from doing this. And as long as they don't hurt, awesome. They're really nice to just get that release. You'll also find that one side is very likely to be more able to get into a twist than the other side. For a lot of people, if you're right-handed, you tend to twist in that direction when you're doing things. So twisting the other way, this is our natural motion. If you're right-handed, is to twist that way. So that twist becomes much easier. This one, a little bit tighter. Does sitting for long periods make your hips too tight? Hint. Yes, yes it does. And tight hips inevitably are gonna to lead to low back pain. So we're gonna move down the body from your arms, shoulders, and back to your hips with a seated figure four stretch. This is a figure four. This is one of my favorites and I give this to almost all of my massage therapy clients. You're gonna sit at the edge of your chair. You're gonna cross right ankle over your left knee, gently press down, and then keeping your back straight, you wanna fold at your hips. For most of you, honestly, just this much of a fold, a few degrees is gonna make it a really good stretch right here in your hip socket. What you don't wanna do when you're trying to fold is curl your spine. If I do this, I'm getting nothing. I don't feel that here at all. So you really wanna make sure that you're staying tall, and that as you bend over, you're really folding into your hip sockets. Make sure you switch legs. And especially if you're somebody who drives long hours, that right hip is gonna love this. But really anybody who sits at your desk for long periods of time, this is the number one stretch I give to everyone that comes into my studio. How many of you have tight hamstrings? Really, I'm guessing for most of these questions I'm asking, everybody's kind of raising their hands to most of these. Sitting all day at work keeps your hamstrings in a shortened position, which over time gets tighter and tighter and tighter. So we wanna make sure that we keep these open throughout the day. So we're gonna do a seated hamstring stretch. To start, you're gonna sit on the very edge of your chair. You're gonna keep one leg bent and the other leg straight. That already, for some of you, might start to feel like a hamstring stretch. And like the seated figure four stretch, we're gonna make sure that we're folding at the hip sockets, not curling our spine, right? Here, I feel nothing in the back of my leg. Here, it immediately goes there. And again, I can sit and hold this for 10 to 20 seconds, or I can do a set of active pulse stretches as long as I'm not hard bouncing into this. Whichever one works best for you. And you wanna make sure to do both sides. I'm gonna try a passive version on this side just to see how it feels for me. Again, no spine curling, just making sure you're tall. Now for a real challenge, you could actually work like this for short periods throughout the day and keep one leg extended while you're working and typing, just feeling that light stretch in the back of the leg. And then maybe every few minutes or so, switch legs. And then when you get a little too tired of that, cause that's gonna make your core work differently. It's gonna have to make things, you're gonna have to keep a slightly different focus. You know, give yourself a break. Don't do this for more than a few minutes every hour or so 
but then you, when you relax, you'll find that you're sitting a lot easier on your chair. Last but not least, I'm glad you stuck around till the end. How many of you suffer from headaches, jaw tension, or full-on TMJ? This bonus stretch, which is gonna be a temporalis self-release, which is this muscle up here, is gonna be your new favorite. These big muscles on your temples, despite the fact that they're up here on your head, are actually jaw-closing muscles. If your headaches show up here, technically they're jaw tension aches, not headaches. So, to help relieve jaw tension headaches, we're going to have you place your fingers on your temples, just above your ears, right here, which is the base of the muscle. You're gonna use kind of a 45 degree angle with your fingertips, and you're gonna press in with medium pressure. And then the idea is you're gonna take those muscles and pull them up towards the crown of your head. This alone should feel pretty good and help out with any kind of tension headaches that you're having. Now, if you want to increase the effect, you can gently open and close your jaw while you're doing it. This will stretch the muscle open as you're working on it with your fingers. There you have it, folks. Our top five desk stretches plus a bonus jaw and headache reliever. If you found this video helpful, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more videos like this. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep finding ways to practice self-care at work and at home.